How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to take a look at this VTE Run battery, solar, and inverter combo set. This video is sponsored by VTE Run. They provided all these products over here for me to review. Guess what? I actually refused to review it after noticing that there was an error in their car adapter port over here. When I did the discharge test, the internal wire somehow overheated and disconnected internally. So they actually modified this product based on my own testing and now it's all better. However, I do think they could still put in a replaceable fuse for this port here. Right now, the internal wiring is just fine, but it's best to connect something that already has like say a 10 amp fuse built in, in line to whatever you plug in. So I only recommend to plug fuse products into this port. One thing I think about is, you can either charge this battery through this port here and a lithium iron phosphate charger, specific to that and you just connect it here this thing is a 14.6 volt output 20 amps that's close to about 300 watts so energy could go in through the top terminals energy can also go in through the solar port right here but you can also do a funny thing where you can plug it to this solar port connect this anderson connector to the charger as well so you can either charge through this port or that port on top gives you some options if you want to like go in from the side instead. Whenever you buy a power station, it usually has these things, including the charger, all combined into one box. It's funny how the industry likes to divide these things in different ways. You can either have a battery that looks like a traditional square block battery, and then you have the inverter that's separate and then a charger that's separate. The most interesting thing about this is that if you turn this around, there's a 12 volt output port, a USB USB A and USB C output port, and also a solar charge input port. This battery is called the SB100H, H means uh, it's self heating. If it doesn't get below freezing, you probably don't need the self heating function. I'm in the coast of California, so I don't really need self heating for these batteries. But if you're in cooler climates, that might become a requirement. This port here uses an aviation style connector. You just plug it in and now you have two MC4 connections. This is a 200 watt MPPT controller. So it will vary the load to get the maximum power output from your solar panel. This one over here, it's also a VTE run branded solar panel, 220 watts. I'll show you guys real quick, four sections. They're fairly large and there's a stand in the back. Many times it might be only 100 watts and the sizing of it would be about two thirds the surface area with four panels as well. So it's pretty amazing they can get 220 watts into this size. Let's do some testing on these batteries and see how well it works. It doesn't normally have this meter on here. I just added all these things on top for testing purposes. For this battery, you actually have to turn on the button in order to activate the output ports. Right now it shows only 1.1 volts. I need to push the button and it activates, it shows 13.48 now. So it gives a easy to access button to turn on and off those terminals. Same thing for the car adapter port and the USB port. You see there's no light on. If I turn on the button, it lights up blue. I did some standard charge and discharge tests just to make sure it works well. Discharging it with this inverter at the maximum for this battery, which is 100 amps, that means at maximum you can only take out 1280 watts, but this inverter is 2000 watts, so it's not using its full power. Doing so, I was only able to withdraw 839 watt hours out of this battery from a full state. Now this is only 65%. It's slightly disappointing because when you draw at its maximum current, Current, the voltage tends to drop and it's actually the inverter that won't allow you to withdraw as much. It sort of cuts out around 12 volts or so. So you're going to get a lot more usage out of this if you have, let's say, another battery in parallel where you're not going all the way up to the maximum 100 amp. Charging at 300 watts with the included AC adapter, I was able to stuff in 1,410 watt hours. The capacity of this is 1,280 watt hours. You normally have to use a little bit more energy than the capacity because there are some inefficiencies inside this power adapter, generally around 20% or so. And in this case, it used about 10% extra. Pretty standard to me. I'm actually surprised it's only 10% extra. When I discharge it through the car adapter port, this 12 volt at 10 amps, I was able to take out 1,245 watt hours, which is 97.2% of the capacity. And that took quite a long time, around 10 hours and 24 minutes. Like I said, if you're gonna draw 10 amps out of this, make sure it is fused externally because there's no fuse inside this thing. The only way it's gonna trip is if you go all the way up to the tripping 
current of the entire battery, which is generally a lot higher than coming out of the car adapter port, more like around 150 amps. So definitely have an inline fuse when using this port. I have the battery connected to the inverter. This little Anderson connector, I left it on so you can charge it. I left the energy meter on and we have this convenient tiny little remote. Push it on, it beeps, it starts turning on the inverter. Three, four, about five seconds later, it powers on. 16 degrees C, 120 volt out, 14.2 volts for the battery here. 21 watts here, but from the battery, it shows 29.9 watts. So it's using about eight watts to run the inverter right now. If I unplug this and let the inverter say zero watts, the inverter is using about five watts on its own. So there's a standby power just for not running anything. And there's also a conversion loss as well and can turn it off. On the inverter, there's also two USB ports. USB-A is a quick charge 3.0, which is up to three amps or 15 watts. The USB-C can go up to 20 watts. There are two AC output ports and you can also turn it off with the front control panel button. Now let's try to overload this system. I'm gonna connect a power station here that'll draw up to 1800 watts or so it's 207 out of this ac inverter but 227 out of the battery that's roughly a 10 percent loss from here to here that's the sort of rough efficiency of this inverter let's turn up the current draw up to the maximum of this battery first i'm drawing about 1000 watts but because of conversion losses already drawing 1.12 kilowatts out of this battery so if i go one step higher at 1100 watts it's gonna go over that 100 and the internal BMS cuts it off. So the usable energy out of the inverter, it's around 1000 watts rather than what you think is out of this battery, which is 1,280. So you have to take into account the conversion loss in the inverter. Even though you have a 2000 watt inverter, you can only take out 1000 watts. If you have two of these batteries in parallel, then yes, you can use this full inverter at 2000 watts. Here's a look at the remote. If you push it, there's a little red light that turns on. There's a little door that you can close over the buttons for extra security and the little antennas on the top with a keychain. The charger is this big block thing. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery charger specifically for this type of battery. 14.6 volt out at 20 amps, which is around 290 watts usage output. When it's red, it's charging. When it's green, it's finished charging charging and the light is over here when I turn it on it's red however when I unplug it it shows a screen so there is some ambiguity with this light color here this is a pure sine wave inverter it has a little handle for you to carry this around the bottom is just all flat on the other side there's nothing there. And on the side where the cables go in, you have two fans. The cable is attached on one side for the red terminal, and then you attach it from the other side for the black cable. There are these plastic housings to cover it, push it in, cover it. This aviation port has two pins and around the connector, there are all these registering pins so that we can plug it in in the correct orientation and twist this outer sleeve until it closes. These are the cables coming from the 220 watt solar panel. If we go ahead and connect these, Usually MC4 connectors are kind of hard to pull apart unless you have the proper tools. But if you want to remove the solar panel temporarily, then you can do it by hand just with this screw nut. Pull that out and store this with your solar panel. Here's a look at their 220 watt solar panel. There's a bright orange handle here for you to carry. The back has a zippered pocket for the cables. In the solar panel, there's also a USB-A and a USB-C connector. This is quick charge 3.0, five volt, three amps. If you've been keeping track, there's actually USB ports in three different areas, one in the solar, one in the inverter, and one in the battery. From most efficient to least efficient, charging from the solar first because you don't have to put it in the battery and then take it back out. And then if you take it from the inverter, you're going one more step again and doing another conversion loss in the inverter. There's a kickstand. Take a look at each panel here. These are 23% efficient solar cells. Each cell section is like right here. And there are 10 strips of conductors laid evenly across the cell to minimize resistance. Let's see the other two. 
looks the same. The handles are slightly magnetic, so they would close up together. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys are interested in getting this self-heating battery, this inverter, or the solar panel, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.